Number five, Jaden Westfall. Number 10, Runyon. Number seven, Mason. Number 16, Rice. Number four, McDaniels. Number four, Keesling. Number one, Garvin. And number 14, Jaron Westfall. And now for the starting lineup for Fairmont Senior. Number three, Cam Peschel. Number one, Sammy Vianney. Number two, Logan Canfield. Number seven, Brody Whitehair. Number 24, Hayden Jones. Number 11, Blake Strait. Number four, Ethan Miller. Number 27, Braden Gorby. Number five, Dylan Hours. Now please rise for the National Anthem. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that Golden Boot pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Sandwiches. Better with Pepsi. And we welcome you to Mary Lou Retton Park for tonight's matchup between the Polar Bears of Fairmont Senior and the visiting Buccaneers of Buchanan Upshur High School. I'm Eli Brady here to take you through the action tonight. The Bucks come into this game with a record of 3-2. and two. They lost their season opener 13-1 to one to University. Came back with a win versus the Huskies of North Marion 11-4. to four. They lost to another good Morgantown team 8-5. to five. Buchanan beat Grafton 5-3, and they beat Liberty last night 12-3. The Polar Bears come in with a record of 3-1 with a win in their season opener versus Cameron. They beat the Colts of Phillip Barber last Thursday 10-1. They lost to the Minutemen of Lewis County last Friday by a score of 14-3. And on Monday, last time out, the Polar Bears defeated Crosstown rival East Fairmont 3-2 to two in a thrilling game, and it's the fifth game of the year for the Polar Bears. All five games have been here at Mary Lou Retton Park. Take a look at the starting lineups for Buchanan Upshur. Leading off will be Landon Marple, followed by Gage Parsons, then Jaden Westfall, Blake Runyon batting in the cleanup, then Wyatt Mason, Drayden Rice, who will start on the mound today for Buchanan, McDaniels, Kiesling, and Garvin round out the starting lineups for the Buccaneers. Take a look at the fielding lineups for the Polar Bears today. On the mound, starting for the first time this season, is Logan Canfield. His catcher will be Ethan Miller. On first is Hayden Jones. Braden Gorby, second straight game, playing at second. Brody Whitehair makes an appearance at shortstop. Sammy Vianney, who... Has started three games this season, will be on third. In left field will be Dylan Hours. Cam Peschel is starting in center field. 
and Blake Strait is starting in right field, and we're just about ready to get this game underway as Marple approaches the plate for Buchanan Upshur. Canfield, a lefty. First left-handed pitcher the Polar Bears have had on the mound this season. The batter is Marple for the Buccaneers. And the game's first pitch is swung on, and that is hit into right center field and a base hit to start this game for Landon Marple. And the Buccaneers have one on and nobody out. Take a look at that replay again. First pitch, Buchanan gets aggressive. They come out swinging. And Marple puts it right into the gap between second and shortstop into center field. Right to Peschel, who fielded it. And a leadoff single for Landon Marple on the first pitch of the game. Canfield checks, delivers. This one is swung on. Same spot. Gorby has a shot at a double play. Two white hair, two Jones, and they got him. A double play on the second pitch of the game, and the Bol Polar Bears have two outs already in the first inning. So going quickly here, take a look. This one was in the same spot. Gorby moved over, gets it to Whitehair, gets it to Hayden Jones in time, and now there's nobody on with two outs for the Buccaneers. Up is Jaden Westfall. That one is in the strike zone for strike one. So Parsons grounded out for the second out of the inning. On a double play by Fairmont Sr. Canfield's pitch a little low for ball one. The batter is Jaden Westfall. One of three Westfalls on this team for Buchanan. Canfield deals that one a little bit high and it, the count is two and one. Westfall, six foot four, has a big strike zone, and Canfield delivers that one inside. The count is three and one. Nobody on with two outs here in the top of the first. Here's the three one, swung on and popped up into left field. Back at the wall is ours, and that one is gone. Jaden Westfall with the home run. And the Buchanan Upshur Buccaneers lead 1-0 in the top of the first. That one had some height under it. I didn't think it was going to get back there, but ours kept going back and back, and it goes over the scoreboard in left field. And it's 1-0 Buchanan Upshur. So an interesting start to this game for Buchanan. They had a hit on the first pitch of the game. The second pitch of the game led to a double play. And then Jaden Westfall hits a home run. And it's 1-0. That'll bring up a runyon to the plate for Buchanan. Canfield deals that one high for ball one. The batter is Blake Runyon, who will be playing at third base today for Buchanan Upshur. Here's the 1-0. That one is in the air. Ours gets under this one, comes up and makes the catch. And we head to the bottom of the first inning. The Buccaneers of Buchanan Upshur lead 1-0 after a solo home run by Jaden Westfall. Leading off for the Polar Bears when we return will be Peschel, Vianney, and Canfield. You're watching live streaming coverage of Polar Bear Baseball here on Video Productions. Here at the Cracker Barrel, home-style food and great value go hand-in-hand hand with favorites like slow-simmered chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park. The Buccaneers of Buchanan Upshur lead 1-0 after a solo home run by Jaden Westfall. 
We'll take a look at the starting lineup for the Polar Bears of Fairmont Senior. Leading off, as usual, will be Cam Peschel, followed by Sammy Vianney. Logan Canfield batting third. Brody Whitehair batting cleanup, followed by Jones, Strait, Miller, Gorby, and Hours rounding off the lineup for the Polar Bears. We'll take a look at the season stats for Cam Peschel, who will be batting first. 333 on the season with four hits, six runs scored, and two runners batted in. Fielding lineups for the Buccaneers. On the mound will be Drayden Rice with Jaden Westfall at first. The catcher is Gage Parsons. Second baseman is Ethan Garvin. Wyatt Mason at shortstop. Blake Runyon on third base. Luke Kiesling out in left field. In center is Landon Marple. And in right field is Jaron Westfall. So Rice finishing up his couple warm-up pitches he has left. Only nine pitches in the top of the first inning for Canfield, but it was an eventful nine pitches. Had a hit on the first pitch of the game by Marple. And then Parsons hit into a double play. And then Jaden Westfall, who batted third, hit a home run. And that's how Buchanan got their only run of the game. And all that occurred in just nine pitches from Canfield. And then Runyon flied out in left field. So up to the plate will come Cam Peschel. Now batting number three, Cam Peschel. He's had a really good start to this season. Didn't have a normal Cam Peschel game against East Fairmont. He did have an RBI on an Error by the first baseman that gave the Polar Bears an early lead. And he stands in for the first pitch at the bottom of the first inning. And that one is called strike one. Special checked his swing. Rice deals the 0-1. That one is swung on and grounded to Mason who fields it. The throw to Westfall is in time for the out. So Peschel grounds out to start the game at the plate for the Polar Bears. Take a look at the replay. and It's just a routine play by shortstop Wyatt Mason. Gets down, fields it cleanly. Throw to Westfall is in time for the out. So one down. That brings up Sammy Vianney for the Polar Bears. Rice fires. Vianney, this one is up. Mason is back, and Mason makes the catch, and there's two away for Fairmont Senior. So Wyatt Mason has seen two balls in three pitches, and he's made the play both times. Nobody on with two outs for the Polar Bears up to the plate is Logan Canfield, who's starting from the mound today. That one is in the strike zone for a strike one. Rice will deal that one in the dirt for ball one. Catcher is Gage Parsons for Buchanan Upshur. Logan Canfield is a left-handed pitcher, but... He bats right-handed. Rice fires and Canfield. That one's in the air. Center fielder Marple is underneath it, and Marple makes the catch and a quick first inning. Only 14, 15 total pitches between the two pitchers in this game. We'll have the second inning coming up next when we return here on Video Productions. Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia, and when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We have that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmered chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99. Or 
perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel. Take care now. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park. Getting ready for the top of the second inning. The Buccaneers of Buchanan Upshur lead 1-0 after a solo home run by Jaden Westfall hit in the top of the first inning. Logan Canfield is on the mound for Fairmont Senior. Due up for the Buccaneers to start the second inning will be Wyatt Mason, followed by the pitcher Drayden Rice and Brody McDaniels. Batting 5, 6, and 7 in this game for the Bucks. These two teams played here a year ago, and it was a hitter's game. The Polar Bears were able to win that one 15 to 10. And you saw already with a home run by Westfall, this Buchanan team is able to put runs on the board. A lot of strength. Now batting number 7, Mason. So Wyatt Mason comes to the plate for Buchanan. They lead 1-0, getting ready for the first pitch of the second inning. Lefty Logan Canfield delivers. A swing and a miss by Mason. Canfield making his first appearance on the mound this season. Only Vianney, Jones, Strait, and Masters have made appearances. And Gorby as well. It's the sixth pitcher of the season shown for the Polar Bears as that pitch was high and outside for ball one. Count is one and one. Canfield delivers a swing, and that one is right to Braden Gorby, and Gorby hangs on and makes the catch for the out. Watch it. Gorby saw a lot of action at second in the East-West game on Monday. Has a hard hit ball right to him, but he's able to hang on, make the catch for the out. Brings up Rice to the plate for the Buccaneers. Canfield fires. Rice showed bunt for a second, pulled back, and it's called ball one. Here's the pitch from Canfield, and that one's in the strike zone for strike one. The count is one and one. The one-one is swung on and in the air and down for a base hit by Rice. So the third hit of the game for Buchanan, and that puts Rice on first with only one out in the top of the second inning. That was over the head of Whitehair and dropped before Hours could get over to it. Canfield delivers that one outside for ball one. On first is Drayden Rice. It's a base runner for Buchanan. At the plate is Brody McDaniels. With one on and one out in the top of the second. Here's the 1-0, and Rice takes off the throw by Millers a little off, and a stolen base there for the pitcher Drayden Rice. Runner now on second for Buchanan in scoring position for Brody McDaniels. The count is one and one. It's one out. Canfield checks, delivers a swing and a miss by McDaniels. The count is one and two. Runner on second is Rice. McDaniels has a one-two count. Canfield will deliver that one. Oh, look to be right down the middle of the strike zone. We'll take a look. Yeah, that was down the middle. 
Canfield delivers, and there's a shot into left center field. Hours is under it, but he can't get there. It is down, and here comes Rice to the plate. RBI single for McDaniels, and Drayden Rice is in. The Buccaneers lead 2-0. So the missed call that would have been a strikeout leads to an RBI single. And Buchanan leads 2-0. Luke Kiesling comes to the plate for Buchanan. After the RBI single by McDaniels that sent Drayden Rice home. Still one on, one out. Now the Buccaneers lead 2-0. Pitch by Canfield is up high for a ball one. So already four hits in this game for Buchanan. Canfield deals that one in the strike zone, curved in. Count is one and one. Ball got away for a second from Ethan Miller. McDaniels does not take off. He stays put on first. The only runner on with one out. The count is one and one. Two key slang and Canfield delivers that one down the middle. They try to throw it back to first. Not in time, but the count is one and two. Cannon's hitting a lot of these balls in the left, left center field. A swing and a miss there by Keesling. And Canfield has his first strikeout of the day. Maybe his first, but he's wishing that was his second. Now batting number one, Dorvin. So there's two outs, the top of the second. Runner on first for Buchanan. That brings up Ethan Garvin to the plate, and that one is in the air. Brody Whitehair is back, and a shallow left center. He can't get there. It's down, and there's a collision, and everyone is safe for Buchanan. So... Take a look at it. It looked like it was shallow. You see Brody going back, going back, going back, and you can see it drop right there. And then Hours and Peschel run into each other. It would have been a tough play from Brody over the shoulder running backwards. That one is grounded and into left field. And the bases are loaded for the Buccaneers. That hit was by Marple, and he is on first. And Buchanan making a lot of contact here early in this game. So Buchanan Upshur has the bases loaded for Gage Parsons. Two outs. Polar Bears trying to escape the top of the second inning without giving up more runs. Already one has come in. It's the pitch from Canfield up high for ball one. Garvin had a hit. Marple had a hit back to back. Loads the bases up. Count is 1-0. and oh. Canfield delivers that one inside for strike one. Canfield had nine pitches in the first inning. This will be number 20 of the second inning. The 1-1 one, one inside for ball two. Bases loaded with two outs. The count is two and one for Gage Parsons. Here's the pitch. That one's inside. A nice pitch from Canfield. Make the count two and two. Strikeout here would be huge for the Polar Bears as Buchanan has the bases loaded. The pitch from Canfield. Contact, and that is through. In to score is McDaniels. Here comes Garvin. He scores, and a two-RBI single from Gage Parsons gives Buchanan a 4 nothing lead. A very similar start for the Polar Bears as they had against the Minutemen of Lewis County last Friday night. 
Lewis County got up big early. They were able to make contact with the ball, put it in play. And ran around the bases all night long. And the Polar Bears now trail 4 nothing, and they still have two base runners on and two outs on the top of the second. So that hit from Parsons sent home Brody McDaniels and Ethan Garvin. And up to the plate now is Jaden Westfall, who had a solo home run in the first inning. Little mound meet here for the Polar Bears. Talking to pitcher Logan Canfield, making his first appearance on the mound this season. Buccaneers come into this game with a record of three and two, but those two losses came to two very good AAA schools in University and Morgantown. Their three wins came all to Big Ten opponents, North Marion, Grafton, and Liberty. And they have a 4-0 lead over the Polar Bears. Up to the plate comes Jaden Westfall. Can he back the home run he had in the first inning? There's two runners on and two outs for Buchanan. The pitch from Canfield and taking off and getting to third with ease. That was Marple. Gets to third quickly, so... Runners on the corners now for Buchanan. That was a ball to Westfall. The count is 1-0. and Marple took off, and he was already to third before Miller even caught the pitch. Westfall stands in the 1-0, and now taking off to second. That throw is in time, but Gorby missed the tag. Parsons came off the base. And Gorby couldn't get him the second time either. A good opportunity there for the Polar Bears to get out of the inning. A little late taking off was Gage Parsons, but Gorby missed the tag there. Parsons slid off the bag. Gorby tried to dive back on it, but not in time. And there's runners on second and third now for Buchanan. Pitch from Canfield, a swing and a miss by Westfall. Count is one and two. Two base runners in scoring position for Buchanan. Trying to make the hole even bigger as they already lead 4-0. The pitch from Canfield, and that one is, I thought it was down the middle. Guess not. It's another tough call Canfield has got. Last one could have got him out of this inning. Pitch from Canfield inside, and that one is called strike three. So Westfall strikes out looking, and the Polar Bears get out of the inning. They allow three runs, though, due up for the Polar Bears. When we come back, we'll be Brody Whitehair, Hayden Jones, and Blake Strait when we return here on Video Productions. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. <sighs> An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. I'm Keith Powell, and going on right now is my Keith Says Yes Fest. I'm saying yes to lowering your payments, yes to your trade-in, regardless of condition, miles, even if you're still making payments. My Keith Says Yes credit approval process helps me say yes, you're approved. So if you want new Chevys, yes. New Fords, yes. Lifetime warranty, yes. Come see me, Keith Powell at Yes Chevy and Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington. Welcome back to Mary Lou Ratton Park. Getting ready for the bottom of the second inning. The Buchanan Upshur Buccaneers lead the Polar Bears of Fairmont Senior 4-0. As they have done damage from the plate early on, Jaden Westfall started the game off with a solo home run in the first. And then Rice came around for Buchanan to score. Brody McDaniels came around and scored. And Ethan Garvin came around and scored in the second inning to give the Buccaneers a 4-0 lead. 
Coming up for the Polar Bears will be Brody Whitehair. We'll take a look at his stats on the season. Batting 300 with three hits, three runs, and three RBIs. So a lot of threes on the board for number seven. Whitehair plays quarterback for the Polar Bears, led the team to a state championship win over the Huskies of North Marion, the 2023 football season. That one is in the dirt by Rice, gets away from the catcher. Count is 1-0. Nobody on, nobody out in the bottom of the second inning. Pitch from Rice. Down the middle for strike one. Count is one and one for Brody Whitehair. With nobody out. Here's the pitch. Swung and grounded to Mason at shortstop. Plays it off a hop. The throw to Westfall is not in time. And Whitehair gets there. He is safe. And a leadoff single for Brody Whitehair. The ball took one little hop before it got into the glove of Mason that hindered the timing of his throw and the speed of Brody Whitehair gets him to first in time with one on and nobody out for Hayden Jones who on the season batting 200 for Jones two hits three runs and an RBI. Whitehair gets off the bag ball gets away Whitehair was laying down on first, didn't see it get away, and he will remain on first. Only nine pitches in this game for Drayden Rice. This will be number 10 to Hayden Jones, senior. That one up high for ball one. A lot of speed, base running of Brody Whitehair. He takes off, and this one is hit into right center field. Moving over is Westfall, and Westfall makes the catch for the out. Sends Whitehair back to first. So that is Jaron Westfall out in right field. It's Jaden Westfall on first base. And that one was right between Marple and Westfall. And Westfall is able to get underneath it. So that one had a lot of height on it for the first out of the inning. Runner on first is Brody Whitehair. At the plate is Blake Strait. Trying to record his first hit of the season. Whitehair with a big lead. Slides back on safely. Rice turns around talking to Marple out in center field. Steps back on. Straight steps back up to the plate. Whitehair gets a big lead at first. Rice delivers that one in the dirt for ball one. One out and one on for the Polar Bears. Brady Whitehair recorded his fourth hit of the season, trying to come around for his fourth run of the season. This one is grounded to the shortstop. Mason throw to first. Westfall can't get it. It's in the dirt, and Blake. And here and there is a balk by the pitcher, Rice. So there's no pitch. So straight comes back to the plate, but Brady Whitehair does get to second on the balk. Take a look at what happened here. Didn't see it live. He didn't get set, I think, was the issue. You can see the ump put his arms in the air. And straight fouls that one back. So that would have put straight on base as the throw was low by Mason. Westfall couldn't pick it up, but they called Balk. And Brody Whitehair gets the second anyway, so K-1. 
Count is one and one. Runner on second with one out. The pitch is grounded foul down third baseline by straight. Way here with a big lead at second. Rice comes off and sends Whitehair back onto the base. Second baseman Ethan Garvin playing way over. The pitch is down the middle for strike three and straight strikes out looking for the second out of the inning. That'll bring up Ethan Miller who on the season is having a And something going on over at second base. Maybe a little altercation between second baseman Garvin and base runner Brody Whitehair. And they're telling them to calm down. Coach Peschel has come out. Coach Reiser is coming out. Coach Squire coming out for Buchanan. Not sure what happened. But Buchanan's entire team has come over to second base. So, take a look at what happened here. Brody returns to the base, and the, you can see the shove there. Can't tell if that's the shortstop, Mason, or the second baseman, Garvin, but there was a push by one of the Buchanan Upshur, Upshur fielders to Whitehair. Not sure what happened before that, though, and the whole team comes out. Getting ready to get back set. Now we can take a look at Ethan Miller's stats on the season. He's had a very good start to this year, batting 444 with four hits, a run, and two RBIs, and doesn't normally run the bases. And this is where you can look to see a courtesy run if he gets on from Cannon Dinger. Miller swings and misses there for strike one. Count is 0-1. Rice checks white hair on first. The throw up high for ball one to Miller. White hair with a big lead. Second baseman Garvin way over. Pitch from Rice and that tags Miller and he gets on base. Ethan Miller on first after getting hit by a pitch and that puts two on for the Polar Bears with two outs. And here comes Cannon Dinger courtesy running for Ethan Miller. Take a look at Dinger's stats. He's played one game this season. He scored twice and has a steal. One of the most athletic kids in the entire state. Brings Braden Gorby up to the plate for the Polar Bears with two on and two outs. Here's the pitch. That one's up high and inside, and Gorby ducks out of the way and sees ball one. Two speedy base runners for the Polar Bears. Brady Whitehair and Cannon Dinger. Whitehair with a big lead. Garvin way over for a pickoff attempt. And Whitehair gets back on as Rice comes off. So the bottom of the second inning. This will be pitch number 20 of the game for Drayden Rice. Here's the pitch. That one's inside for ball two to Braden Gorby. And if Gorby can get on base here and load them up, 
Dylan Hours is on deck batting 573 on the year. Not who you want to see at the plate if you're Buchanan. Here's the 2-0. That one up high for ball three. So Gorby with an ideal 3-0 count. Rice trying to avoid walking Gorby in four pitches. Which will load the bases up with two outs in the bottom of the second. Here's the 3-0. That one down the middle for strike one. You're almost daring Gorby to swing right there, giving him right one right over the plate. He takes it for strike one, and the count is three and one. The pitch from Rice is up high, and Gorby will take his base. The Polar Bears have the bases loaded, and coming up is Dylan Hours, who on the season... Batting a team high 571 with four hits, one run, and two RBIs, and he's got the bases loaded. Here's the pitch, and Hours, this one is in the left field. Back is Kiesling at the fence, and it is gone! A grand slam! Are you kidding me? Dylan Hours! It's a grand slam, and we are tied! Unbelievable. How about that from Dylan Hours? The first home run of the season is a grand slam by Dylan Hours, and we are tied four to four. Wow. How quickly the tables have turned here at Mary Lou Retton Park. So the Buccaneers have seen a 4 nothing lead disappear on one swing of the bat. And that will improve the batting average to over 600 for Dylan Hours. Just signed with Cal University of Pennsylvania to play football last night at 5.30 in the library of Fairmont Senior High School. And he clears the bases, the grand slam in the bottom of the second inning to tie it up 4-4. That one up high to Cam Peschel for ball one. So the second... One hit out of the park we've seen in this game, and Peschel hits that one, and Garvin can't hang on, and Cam Peschel has a base hit. And keep in mind, the Polar Bears had two outs for the entirety of that sequence, loading the bases up, getting a grand slam. Sammy Vianney comes up to bat for the Polar Bears. With Cam Peschel on first. Peschel takes off. Throw by Parsons is not in time. And Peschel is safe with a stolen base. He leads the team in steals this season. That is his third. You can see him take off right as Rice delivers. And Parsons couldn't get it there in time. Two outs with a runner on second for the Polar Bears. Rice delivers that one in the dirt. Peschel takes off to third. Parsons the throw, not in time. And Peschel gets to third. And the Polar Bears can take the lead here after trailing 4 nothing coming into this inning. Vianney at the plate with a 2-0 count. Pitch from Rice down the middle for strike one. Two one count. One on third, two outs. That is grounded by Vianney to Garvin. The throw to Westfall is in time, and the inning is over, but not before we saw Dylan Hours hit a grand slam for the Polar Bears to tie it up 4-4. Four four. 
do up for the Buccaneers when we return will be Runyon, Mason, and Rice. You're watching live streaming coverage of Polar Bear Baseball on Video Productions. Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia, and when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We have that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar Rewards Card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar Stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. Welcome back to Mary Lou Ratton Park, getting ready for the top of the third inning. Due up for the Buccaneers will be Blake Runyon, Wyatt Mason, and Drayden Rice. And we got a game again. It looked like it was slipping away from the Polar Bears early, just like it did against Lewis County, and Dylan Hours said no. A grand slam to tie this game at 4-4. And one thing I looked at before I started calling Polar Bear baseball games was when was the last time there was a grand slam in Polar Bear baseball? And I went back through the years in the stats on Max Preps and went back to 2018 and didn't see one. So... It's the first grand slam for the Polar Bears in at least the last six years. And it has tied the game up at four. And it's very, very rare to see a grand slam in high school baseball. So Runyon comes to the plate for the Buccaneers. See how they respond. He swings and misses at the first pitch. That could be, even though it was ours that hit the Grand Slam, that could be something that gets a lot of confidence for Canfield knowing that this game is tied again. Count is 0-2. Runyon flat out in the first inning. Pitch from Canfield is grounded to Vianney. Field, no, he can't field it. Gets behind him and an error by Vianney. Puts Runyon on first. So Vianney tried to field it right on the transition from the grass to the dirt, and it goes under his glove. It's the first time Vianney has been at third base this season. normally on the mound for the Polar Bears. So one on, nobody out. The pitch from Canfield, and that one had a lot of curve to it, but he doesn't get the call from the home plate umpire, and the count is 1-0. and oh. At the plate for the Buccaneers is Wyatt Mason, who flied out in the second inning. Pitch from Canfield is swung on this one into center field. Peschel gets underneath it, and Peschel makes the catch for the first out of the inning. The balls are flying in this game. It is pretty windy here at Mary Lou Retton Park. We've already seen two home runs on the game so far. One by Westfall, that was a solo shot, and a grand slam by Dylan Hours. Canfield delivers. That one had a lot of curve to it, and it was looked like to be over the plate. Doesn't get the call. It seems... Those balls on the outside are not getting called as strikes today, but it seems like the strike zone's moved more inside. Canfield delivers that one down low for ball two to pitcher Drayden Rice. Runner on first is Blake Runyon. Two zero count, one out and one on. Canfield delivers the pitch. That one is swung on into left field. Hours a diving catch. No, he dropped it. 
And they throw to Gorby for the force out at second. And it was probably better that Hours did drop that because they still get the lead runner out. Take a look. Hours slides. It came out of his glove, but you can see Runyon caught between first and second. He thought Hours caught it and tried to run back to first. Hours already had the ball in Gorby's glove. By that time, and that one is outside and a steal by Drayden Rice. So Miller comes up to the mound to talk with Logan Canfield. McDaniels at the plate for the Buccaneers with Two outs in the top of the third inning. We've got an entertaining game. Buchanan led 4 nothing at one point, then on one swing of the bat, it was tied. And it's tied right now. Here's the 1-0. That one in the dirt. Miller gets on top of it. And the count is now 2-0 for McDaniels. Base runner on second is Drayden Rice. Canfield looks back. Fires the 2-0. Outside for a ball of three, and it's a 3-0 count. With two outs and one on. The 3-0. That one catches the edge of the strike zone for strike one. A good pitch there from Canfield. Makes the count three and one for McDaniels. Canfield looks back at Rice. The base runner on second. Deals the three one inside and he walks Brody McDaniels. Brings up Luke Kiesling. For the Buccaneers. And you might notice McDaniels, number four, is on first and got another number four for the Bucks. That one is in the dirt for ball one. So Buchanan has two number fours on their team. Designated hitter Brody McDaniels and then Luke Kiesling. Both are number four and they bat back to back. So there's two on and two outs. And the count is 1-0 and to Kiesling. Canfield looks back, delivers that one up high for ball two. Tight strike zone here today. Canfield already over 50 pitches. This will be number 52. The 2-0. That one misses under the strike zone for ball three. And... Another 3-0 count for Buchanan. Canfield looks back. Count is 3-0, and he steps off the mound. Two on and two out. Buccaneers threatening, threatening to load the bases up for the second time today, and they do just that. Kiesling walks. Two outs with the bases loaded. Now batting number one, Gorman. Polar Bears had that same situation an inning ago and hit a grand slam, and it was their ninth batter that did it, Dylan Hours. Buchanan has their ninth batter up, Ethan Garvin, who had an RBI single in the second inning. The pitch from Canfield with... A nice curve, but it misses up high for ball one. And here comes a meeting on the mound as Coach Peschel comes out to talk with Logan Canfield. With the bases loaded and two outs in the top of the third inning.
Garvin, the batter for Buchanan Upshur, with the bases loaded. He would love to try to give Buchanan the lead again. They led 4 nothing, and saw it slip away on one swing by Dylan Hours. The Bears will return to their positions. Logan Canfield remains on the mound with 54 pitches and a little under three innings in this game. Batter is Ethan Garvin with the bases loaded and two outs for Buchanan. Canfield deals the 1 0, and there is strike one. They're liking the calls inside of the batter in this game. Canfield went to the inside there, and he got the call. The count is 1 and 1, and it is fouled back by Garvin, and the count is now 1 and 2. And now, one of the most ideal positions you can have with the bases loaded. Two outs and two strikes. Just need one pitch to try to put it away. Canfield has struck out two batters in this game looking for a third, which would be huge. The one-two. And that one is grounded. No, it's in the air and over Whitehair's head. He can't hang on. Buchanan scores one. Throw to Miller is in time. And only one run comes in for Buchanan, but they recapture the lead here in the top of the third inning. That one right over the head of Brody Whitehair. Take a look at the replay. Slow it down for you. You can see it in the air. Whitehair jumps. Just couldn't get there in time. And it goes over his head into left center field. And bases are loaded once again with two outs. This time, Buchanan playing with the lead. Batter is Marple, and he sees strike one down the middle. So the runner that came in was Brody McDaniels. Kiesling at third. Sorry, the runner came in was Rice. McDaniels at third, Kiesling at second, Garvin at first. A swing and a miss by Marple, and the count is 0-2. So Rice came around on the RBI single by Ethan Garvin. Landon Marple trying to do the same as Canfield steps off the mound. 0-2 count, bases loaded. Score is 5 for Buccaneers. Threatening again. Marple has two hits in this game. Looking for his third to extend the lead. The pitch is down low and inside for ball one. It's been a chippy game so far between the two teams. We already have a minor altercation in this one. And it's a high scoring game just like it was last year. A game that saw the Polar Bears win 15-10. to Canfield, the one-two, grounded. Can Whitehair make the play this time? He throws it to Gorby for the force out, and the Polar Bears get out of the inning, only allowing one run this time. We'll have the bottom of the third inning coming up next here on Video Productions. Hi, my name's Zach Frazier, and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold of pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Sandwiches. Better with Pepsi. It's 5-4 from Mary Lou Ratton Park in the bottom of the third inning. Due up for the Polar Bears will be Logan Canfield, Brody Whitehair, and Hayden Jones to lead off the inning. Drayden Rice remains on the mound for Buchanan. 
Only 30 pitches in this game for Rice as opposed to Canfield 61. Canfield has pitched an extra inning. Polar Bears had three batters in the first inning. All of them got out. And then in the second inning, Whitehair, Miller, Gorby, and Hours all scored on Hours' grand slam. And that's how the score is 5-4. Drayden Rice finishing his warm-up. Logan Canfield will step in. See if the Polar Bears can continue what they started in the second inning. Bears trail again in this game. It's tied at 0-0. They trailed at most 4-0. Canfield, this one's into left field. Back is Kiesling, and getting under it and making the catch is Luke Kiesling for the first out of the third inning. Up to the plate comes Brody Whitehair, who had a single in the second inning. He came around and scored on ours as Grand Slam. Pitch from Rice is fouled back by Whitehair. Nobody on and one out. The count is 0-1 for Brody Whitehair. The pitch from Rice is outside for ball one. Here's the 1-1 one, one in the dirt for ball two. Already over an hour of baseball played in this game, and we're not through the third inning yet. Completely opposite of the East-West game on Monday that flew by the first four innings. A swing and a miss by Whitehair makes the count two and two. Softball playing over on the softball field against Buchanan. And then girls lacrosse game at East-West Stadium also playing Buchanan tonight. Here's a grounder by Whitehair to Mason. The throw to Westfall bounces, and Westfall hangs on for the out. A great play by first baseman Jaden Westfall as he's able to scoop it up out of the dirt to get the out. Whitehair hit at the same spot. He hit it too in the second inning. Mason wasn't able to get the throw there in time. This time he does and gets the second out of the inning for Buchanan. Hayden Jones steps up to the plate. The pitch from Rice a little outside for ball one. Jones flied out in the second inning. Two outs and nobody on. Here's the 1-0. Swung on and fouled back by Hayden Jones. Makes the count one and one. Pitch from Rice. Swung on in the air and foul over the visitors' dugout. Makes the count one and two for Jones. Nobody on and two outs for the Polar Bears. Here is the one two. That one down low and outside. Count is two and two. The two two in the dirt. And the count is full after being one and two. Jones trying to get on base. Have the first base runner of the third inning for the Polar Bears. Only 11 pitches in this inning for Rice. Here's the payoff pitch. That one up high and Jones will take his base. Not a lot of walks in this game. For Drayden Rice, that's just his third. Brings up Blake straight to the plate. 
Struck out in the second inning. Here's the pitch from Rice outside for ball one. Base runner at first is Hayden Jones. Two outs, 1-0 count for Blake Strait. And they try to pick off Jones, and he slides back on first safely. Close game. Buchanan leads by one. Polar Bears trying to keep the inning alive. A swing and a miss by Strait for strike one. Jones with a lead. The count is one and one. Here's the pitch from Rice, and that one is popped up and fouled back by Straight. Makes the count one and two. Rice checks Jones at first. Two outs. Here's the one, two. Swung on and grounded into the gap by Strait. And no throw from Mason. And Blake Strait has his first hit of the season. Now every polar bear batter that has come up to the plate this season has a hit. Straight grounded it is a long run, is a slow grounder, but made Mason run for it. No throw. Two on and two outs. Ethan Miller at the plate for the Polar Bears. Rice steps off for a second. Hayden Jones, the base runner, on second. Ethan Miller. Walked in the second inning. Another time called. Base runners are Hayden Jones and Blake Strait for the Polar Bears. Ethan Miller is the batter. Pitch from Rice in the dirt gets away. Jones stays put on second base. Count is 1 0 to Miller. Polar Bears like try to tie this game before sending it back to the top of the fourth. They trail by one. Hayden Jones in scoring position representing the tying run. The pitch from Rice in the dirt again for ball two. Ethan Miller was hit by a pitch in the second inning. He took his base. Scored on ours grand slam. Count is 2-0 and oh with two on and two outs in the bottom of the third inning. Here's the pitch from Rice. Inside, strike one called. The pitches are inside. They're getting called strikes today. If they're getting outside edge, they're getting called as balls. Count is 2-1. and one. Rice checks Jones at second. Here's the pitch in the dirt. Three and one. Three one. Count for Miller. Two on and two out. This will be pitch number 51 for Drayden Rice. Swung on and grounded, and it is past Runyon. Here comes Jones. Hayden Jones is safe, and we are tied. 5-5 five, five in the bottom of the third. How about Ethan Miller on the season? That one slipped right under the glove of third baseman Blake Runyon, and Hayden Jones comes in on the RBI 
by Ethan Miller. And we are tied 5-5 with runners on the corners. Brings up Blake Gorby, Braden Gorby to the plate. Blake Runyon is the third baseman that let the ball get past him. Cannon Dinger in as a courtesy runner on first for Ethan Miller. Here's the pitch, and Gorby, this one's in the left center. Under it is Marple, and he can't make the catch. Fairmont has the lead. Here comes Dinger. He's coming to the plate. Cannon Dinger's going to score. It's 7-5, Fairmont Sr. Straight came in. Gorby has a two RBI double. And the Polar Bears doing damage with two outs for the second straight inning. How about Braden Gorby? So Dinger scored, Straight scored, and Jones scored all in this inning, and the Bears see a 7-5 lead. Here's the pitch. Down low for strike one. Dylan Hours at the plate. Take a look at his season stats, and this is before his grand slam. He would now have six RBIs, five hits, and two runs, and his average would be over 600. That one outside. For a ball one. Runner on second with two outs is Braden Gorby. Count is one and one for Dylan Hours. They try to pick off Gorby and he's back safely. Another great game here at Mary Lou Retton Park. We had a good one Monday. Saw the Polar Bears knock off Crosstown rival East Fairmont 3-2. to two. This one, a hitter's duel. 7-5. Hours swings and misses at that one. And he was going for his second home run of the day on that one. Count is one and two with one on and two outs. Polar Bears lead by two. That one down low for ball two. Makes the count two and two for hours. Polar Bears lead seven to five after back-to-back -back innings with at least three runs scored. Gorby takes off. Hours fouls that one back. Gorby heads back to second. Count remains two and two for Dylan Hours. Pitch from Rice. Swung on, and this one's into left field, but it's off the glove of Keesling. Braden Gorby scores. Fairmont leads 8 5. And another. Ball off the glove of an outfielder of Buchanan. And Dylan gets to second. Now batting, number three, Cam Peschel. Fairmont doing damage here in the third inning. They lead eight to five. Hours at second. Peschel at the plate. Polar Bears now have a three-run lead after trailing by four early in this game. Gorby came around and scored. Last time out, that one inside called strike one. To Peschel, the count is 0-1. Dylan Hours is the base runner at second. The 0-1. 
Swung on and grounded. That's fair by Peschel. Here comes Hours rounding third. He will score with ease. 9-5 Fairmont Senior. Peschel slides in at second. He is safe at RBI double. And the Polar Bears are pouring it on in the bottom of the third inning. And they've done all of this damage with two outs. The Bucks have not been able to get out of this inning. It was 5-4. And Rice has a meeting at the mound. He's now thrown 30 pitches in this inning and has given up five runs. So Sammy Vianney will be the batter. Started off the season very hot against Cameron and Phillip Barber, but since then he has struggled from the plate. He hasn't gotten a hit since the Phillip Barber game last Thursday. His batting average was 1,000 after the Cameron game. It's down to 273, trying to raise it in this one. And we have a pitching change for the Buccaneers, so we'll step away for a minute while the new pitcher Wyatt Mason warms up will return here on video productions mm. sandwiches better with Pepsi an injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. I'm Keith Powell, and going on right now is my Keith Says Yes Fest. I'm saying yes to lowering your payments, yes to your trade-in, regardless of condition, miles, even if you're still making payments. My Keith Says Yes credit approval process helps me say yes, you're approved. So if you want new Chevys, yes. New Fords, yes. Lifetime warranty, yes. Come see me, Keith Powell at Yes Chevy and Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park. The Polar Bears lead at nine to five over the Buccaneers of Buchanan Upshur. They trailed five to four with two outs in this inning. They have now scored five consecutive runs. Hayden Jones, Blake Strait, Cannon Dinger, Braden Gorby, and Dylan Hours have all scored in this inning. And Buchanan Upshur has decided to switch pitchers. It is Wyatt Mason on the mound now for the Bucks. Moving to shortstop will be Landon Marple, who is in center field. Garvin will remain at second, and pitcher Drayden Rice moves into center field. The pitch first by Mason is grounded foul down first baseline by Vianney. Still two outs in the bottom of the third. The Polar Bears have scored five runs in this inning, all with two outs. And they have a base runner at second in Cam Peschel. And the batter is Sammy Vianney. Pitch from Mason. Goes off speed and curves it in for strike two to Vianney. Here's the 0-2. Down low in the dirt. Ball one. Second pitcher of the game for Buchanan is Wyatt Mason, who originally started at shortstop. Landon Marple has taken his spot there, and starting pitcher Drayden Rice is back in center field. Goes to the off speed again. Misses the strike zone. Count is two and two for Sammy Vianney.
Here's the pitch from Mason as Peschel takes off, but Vianney fouls it back. Count is two and two with one on and two outs for Vianney. Big gap between first baseman Westfall and second baseman Garvin. That one is high for ball three, and Cam Peschel has a steal, and he gets to third. And the count is full now for Vianney. Peschel now at third in scoring position if Vianney's able to make contact with it. The payoff pitch is popped up high and foul by Vianney. Count remains full. Mason checks Peschel at third. The payoff pitch swung on, and Vianney has a base hit. It's down. Cam Peschel comes in on an RBI single from Vianney, and it's 10 to 5. How about this response for the Polar Bears after trailing 4 0 in the second inning? They have come back, outscored Buchanan 10 to 1 since then. Brings up Logan Canfield. And again, like I said, it was 5 4 with two outs. Buchanan had basically the inning over, and then. They have now allowed six consecutive runs, and Canfield has another base hit for the Polar Bears into left center. And now there's two on with two outs, and Brody Whitehair will come to the plate. And Whitehair is up, and we've already seen some pushing, shoving, and talking between Wyatt Mason and Brody Whitehair when Brody Whitehair was on second as a base runner, and Mason was playing shortstop. So Canfield flew out earlier in this inning. He gets a base hit there, and there's two on and two outs for Brody Whitehair. See how Mason responds here. Whitehair grounds it. This is going to be thrown to first and is in time for the out. And Buchanan finally gets out of this nightmare of an inning. We have the top of the fourth coming up next when we return on video productions. It's the Polar Bears 10, the Buchanan Upshur Buccaneers 5. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that Golden Boot Pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Sandwiches. Better with Pepsi. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park. This game was 4 0 Buchanan earlier on. The Polar Bears have outscored the Buccaneers 10 to 1 in the last two innings since then. But the Buccaneers have been doing damage in every inning. They've gotten multiple hits every inning. They've had at least three base runners every inning. They scored three times in the second. They scored once in the third, once in the first. So. In a game like this, it's not over. And due up for Buchanan Upshur will be Gage Parsons, Jaden Westfall, and Blake Runyon. Start the top of the fourth inning. 90 minutes into this game. And we're just over halfway through. Assuming it ends in seven innings. Canfield still on the mound for the Polar Bears. 
Deals that one high for ball one to Gage Parsons. Count is 1-0. and oh. Nobody on and nobody out. Pitch from Canfield. Up high again for ball two. McKinnon just needs to be doing what they've done all game, and that's put base runners on the bases. Five runs in three innings is a lot. And this team definitely can put some runs on the board at any given moment. As they trail by five, that one's inside for ball three, and Gage Parsons sees a 3-0 count. Count is 3-0. and oh. The pitch from Canfield is called strike one. Went back inside of the box there and got the call from the home plate umpire. The 3-1. That one's inside and he doesn't get that call and Parsons is on. Brings up Jaden Westfall who in this game is struck out and homered. So, dangerous hitter at the plate for Buchanan with a runner on first. Nobody out. One runner on for Buchanan. Upshur. This will be pitch number 67 in this game for Canfield. And it's down low for ball one. Not a lot of strikeouts in this game combined. Canfield only has two. And Rice had one when he was in for Buchanan. That one is down low in the dirt for ball two. So... Last seven pitches for Canfield has been one strike and six balls. Has a 2-0 count here. Delivers that one inside, and there's the strike. Went back to the inside edge of the strike zone. Runner on first is Parsons. A swing and a miss by Westfall. Makes the count 2-2. Two and two. Canfield checks Parsons on first. Westfall stands in. The 2-2, a swing and a miss. Westfall strikes out. But Parsons advances base to second. One out in this inning as Westfall has struck out for the second time today. Brings up Runyon for the Buccaneers who reached first on an error in the third inning. With one out and one base runner on second is Gage Parsons. Time called by the home plate umpire. Runyon comes back in to the batter's box. And he steps back out. Watch on the Polar Bear Sports Channel as well. We got girls lacrosse game at East West Stadium and that one in the strike zone for strike one. So almost all of Buchanan Upshur's spring sports is in Marion County. Baseball here, softball over at the softball field behind this one here at Mary Lou Retton Park and girls lacrosse at East West Stadium. Count is 0-1 and, and that one is fouled back by Runyon. Off the top of the press box. One out. For the Buccaneers and a base runner on second is Parsons. Just past 7 o'clock. Here at Mary Loretton Park. Game started at 5.30. We're in the top of the fourth inning. 
Here's the pitch, and it's grounded slowly by Runyon. Canfield has to get it and flip it to Jones, and he gets it there in time for the second out of the inning. Take a look at the replay. It is very, very slow off the bat from Runyon. Canfield able to hop off the mound and field it in time and flip it to Hayden Jones for the out. Gage Parsons advances his base to third, so... Runner in scoring position for the Buccaneers. Brings up Wyatt Mason, who's flied out twice in this game in the second and third inning. Two outs. Runner on third. The pitch from Canfield is swinging a miss by Mason. Count is 0-1 for Wyatt Mason. Gets the pitch from Canfield, and it's swung and fouled back. Count is 0-2. Canfield sitting at 76 pitches in this game. Looking at number 77 right now. The 0-2 is fouled. By Mason, he didn't even go around. The ball went right off his bat into the Buccaneer dugout. Count remains 0-2 with Parsons on third, looking to try to come home and cut the deficit. That one is grounded. Whitehair fields it, can't field it cleanly, tries to throw it to Jones, and he gets it in time for the out. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Fairmont Senior still leads by five. You're watching live streaming coverage of Polar Bear Baseball here on Video Productions. Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We had that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Here at the Cracker Barrel, home style food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park. The Polar Bears of Fairmont Senior hold a 10-5 lead over the Buccaneers of Buchanan Upshur. Due up for the Polar Bears in this inning will be Hayden Jones, Blake Strait, and Ethan Miller after the entire lineup batted in the third inning where the Polar Bears saw six runs come in. Go over the fielding changes for Buchanan Upshur. They had a pitching change last inning, saw Wyatt Mason go to the mound. Center fielder Landon Marple came and took Mason's spot at shortstop. Jaden Westfall took his brother's spot, Jaron Westfall, in right field. Jaron Westfall moved to center field, and the pitcher Drayden Rice moved to first base. So a lot of fielding changes for the Buccaneers. And we'll see what more damage the Polar Bears can do in this inning. And in the last two innings combined, the Polar Bears have scored all 10 runs in this game with two outs. It's the pitch from Mason is in the strike zone for strike one to Hayden Jones. Here's the 0-1 from Mason, and that one had a lot of curve on it, but hit the plate about a foot short. Count is 1-1 one and one to Jones. Jones flied out in the second, walked in the third, and he grounds it to Marple here, throw to Rice's in time for the out. So Hayden Jones grounds out to start the fourth inning. Now batting number 11, Blake 
Blake Strait comes up to the plate. He has a hit in this game. And the strikeout. One out, nobody on for the Polar Bears. Pitch from Mason. Swung and straight grounds it to Marple. A slow one. Marple, the throw to Rice is in time for the out. So back-to-back -back outs. Grounded out for the Polar Bears. Two away, but all the damage they've done in this game has been with two outs. And now instead of Ethan Miller at the plate, Matt Masters steps in for the Polar Bears. Matt Masters has shown a lot of signs that he can hit the ball, pitch the ball this season. Coach Dave Reiser trusts him to step in for Ethan Miller in the seven spot with nobody on and two outs. Pitch from Mason to Masters. Curves outside for ball one. Home plate umpire confirming it is a pinch hitter. The 1 0 down low for ball two. Here's the 2 0. Swung and fouled back by Masters, and you ought to think if Masters is able to get on base here, they will send a courtesy runner in, Cannon Dinger, who usually comes in when either Ethan Miller or Matt Masters gets on base, and Miller has been on base twice. Dinger's coming in, scored twice. That one's in the dirt for ball three. Speaking of Cannon Dinger, it's his second game played of the season. He has scored every time he's come on base. Four runs. Pitches inside, and Masters walks. He gets on base. And Masters is on first. Now batting at number 27, Braden Gorby. And it looks like they're going to leave Masters on first this time. Braden Gorby comes in with two outs for the Polar Bears. That one curves way outside for ball one. Mason's pitch has a lot of curve on it. He just hasn't been able to put it in the strike zone. Here's the 1 0. Down the middle for strike one. Count is 1 and 1 with two outs and one base runner for the Polar Bears in the bottom of the fourth inning. Fairmont by five. Gorby at the plate. The pitch from Mason. There's another curve that goes way outside for ball two. If Mason can get that ball to curve into the strike zone, that is going to be a nasty pitch, but we haven't seen that from him yet today. This will be pitch number 23 for Wyatt Mason, who's pitching in relief for Drayden Rice. He's now at first base. The pitch is up high, and Masters takes off. Masters gets to second, and the Polar Bears yet again for the third straight inning doing damage with two outs on the board, and the count is 3-1 and one now for Braden Gorby with Masters at second now. Parsons comes up to his pitcher, Wyatt Mason. Returns behind the plate. 3-1 count for Braden Gorby, who steps back into the box. Masters with the lead at second. Pitch from Mason, and that one is called strike two. The count is full. Dylan Hours on deck for the Polar Bears. And you definitely don't want to allow two base runners with Dylan Hours coming up. Here's the pitch, and that one almost tagged Gorby, and he will take his base. Here comes Dylan Hours up to the plate. 
He was batting 571 on the season before this game, and today he had a grand slam in the second inning and a two RBI double in the third inning. So his batting average has now skyrocketed way above 600. He hasn't had as many plate appearances as some of the players on the team, about half of what, say, Peschel and Vianney have had. And there's that curveball from Mason we are talking about. He got to curve in the strike zone for strike one there. Two on, two outs. And again, Buchanan had the Polar Bears. Two outs and no base runners. A lot of back-to-back -back base runners. It's Masters and Gorby on. That one curves inside a little too much, and it's ball one. Count is one and one for Dylan Hours. Hours would like to try to get his seventh RBI of the game. Potentially eight. A swing and a miss there makes the count one and two. On the season, Hours had two RBIs coming into this game. He has six already. Pitch from Mason. This is grounded, and it is picked up, and throw to first is in time for the out, the third out of the fourth inning. Top of the fifth coming up next when we return here on Video Productions. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. <sighs> An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. I'm Keith Powell, and going on right now is my Keith Says Yes Fest. I'm saying yes to lowering your payments, yes to your trade-in, Regardless of condition, miles, even if you're still making payments, my Keith Says Yes credit approval process helps me say yes, you're approved. So if you want new Chevys, yes. New Fords, yes. Lifetime warranty, yes. Come see me, Keith Powell, at Yes Chevy and Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park. Polar Bears have a 10-5 lead over the Buccaneers of Buchanan Upshur. Logan Canfield will remain on the mound for Fairmont Senior with 78 pitches starting the top of the fifth inning. And Canfield got through the fourth inning without allowing a run come in. First inning today, he's done that, and he's gotten better as the game has gone on. And the longer Canfield stays in, the better it is for the Polar Bears not having to use another pitcher. So if Canfield can keep up what he did in the fourth inning, that'd be an ideal situation for Coach Dave Reiser. Up to the plate for the Buccaneers will be Drayden Rice, who has singled twice in this game in the second and third innings, and he has scored both times. A dangerous player at the plate for Buchanan Upshur. Here's the pitch from Canfield, and it's in the dirt for ball one. Here's the 1-0, and it's grounded by Rice, the field by Gorby. No, it came out of his glove, and Gorby can't make the throw to first. And Drayden Rice reaches with an error by Braden Gorby. I was waiting for Gorby to throw the ball. He wound up and there was no ball in his hand. And Rice is on first. Third time, three for three on base today for Drayden Rice. Nobody out for the Buccaneers. Canfield tries to pick him off. At the plate now for the Buccaneers is Brody McDaniels. Who has a single and walk and has come around for a run in this game. 
That one up high for ball one. Sun just beginning to set here in Fairmont. Pitch from Canfield, and Rice takes off, and he is safe with a stolen base. So Rice on second. He's now in scoring position. Second steal of the game for Drayden Rice. Nobody out. With McDaniels at the plate who has a single already in this game. The count is 1-0. Canfield tries to pick off Rice. A little late on the throw to Gorby and Rice is back safely. Number four, Brody McDaniels. Number four, number one. As there are two number fours on the team for Buchanan. The pitch from Canfield up high for ball two. Canfield over 80 pitches in this game. The top of the fifth inning. The 2-0. That one. Right down the middle. McDaniel stepped out of the box. That was a perfect pitch by Canfield. Here's the 2-1. That one, a curveball. That was a 3-1 pitch. And so McDaniels walks. We thought it was 2-1 up here in the press box, but... Home plate umpire signaled that that was ball four. And now we're having a mound meet. Still think it was 2-1. If you're watching, you can rewind to see. Clearly here at Mary Lorette and Park, we can't go back to know what the count is. But if you're watching at home, you can know. If you rewind the live stream about a minute, see what the count actually was. Home plate umpire had a 3-1 count, and that was ball four. Scoreboard here at the park had a 2-1 count and said that was ball three. Either way, it doesn't matter as Buccaneers have two base runners with nobody out. In the top of the fifth inning with Luke Kiesling. Coming up to bat, and we appear to have a pitching change, potentially. It looks to be Braden Gorby coming in for relief. I would assume Braden Gorby did a really good job in the game against Philip Barber, he got the win. Polar Bears won 10-1 to last Friday against the Colts. No, it's going to be Hayden Jones, it looks like. So they give the ball to Hayden Jones. He started against Lewis County in the 14-3 to loss. Comes in and starts to warm up. We'll step away for a minute. Watching live streaming coverage of Fairmont Senior Polar Bear Baseball here on Video Productions. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand. With favorites like slow simmered chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99. Or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel. Take care now. Welcome you back to Mary Lou Ratton Park. The Polar Bears hold a 10-5 lead over Buchanan Upshur. And a pitching change for the Polar Bears. Take a look at the fielding changes. So coming into pitch will be Hayden Jones. And looks like Blake Strait will move from right field to first base as Jones moves from first to the mound. 
Peschel moves from center field to right field, and Logan Canfield moves from the mound back to center field. And we're just about ready. It's the batter for Buchanan is Luke Kiesling. I wouldn't strike one. I look to see the number. It's number four, and there's two number fours for Buchanan. McDaniels, who's also number four, is the base runner at first. Here's the 0-1. Showing bunt, and it dies right in front of the plate. Jones throw to straight is in time for the out. So one out for the Polar Bears as Jones runs up to the ball, thrown to the first baseman, Blake Strait. Kiesling grounds out. First out of the inning brings up Ethan Garvin, who has two base hits in this game. Both times he's been up to the plate. Polar Bears lead 10-5, but Cannon Upshur threatening here with two on, two in scoring position, and only one out. Here's the pitch from Jones, and it is fouled back. Makes the count 0-1. And the batter now for the Buccaneers is Tucker Burr instead of Ethan Garvin. So Burr is now in for Buchanan. Here's the pitch from Jones. Down low and misses for ball one. Two on, one out. Top of the fifth inning. The 1-1 one, one from Jones is down the middle for strike two. A great pitch there for Hayden Jones. Base runners are Rice and McDaniels. And he swung, missed, struck out, and Miller applies the tag for the second out of the inning on Tucker Burr. Back to the top of the order now for Buchanan. Now batting number nine, Marple. Luke Marple comes up now. Landon Marple comes up now for the Buccaneers with two on and two out. Top of the fifth inning. Got to put runs on the board here if you're Buchanan. Jones's pitch is misses up high for ball one. Landon Marple in this game. Singled in the first inning, singled in the second inning, grounded out in the third inning. This is his fourth plate appearance. And he calls time. Steps out of the box for a second. Here's the 1 0. That one on the outside edge of the strike zone, and it's called ball two. Count is 2-0, and, oh, and Buchanan Upshur threatening to have the bases loaded for the third time today. With two on already. This one is hit at Gorby. Braden Gorby makes the catch and ends the top of the fifth inning. He had one like that slip out of his glove earlier. He's able to hang on and make the catch. We'll take a look at the replay real quick. One quick leap, and he hangs on for the out. Do up for the Polar Bears when we return will be Peschel, Vianney, and Canfield. You're watching live streaming coverage of Polar Bear Baseball here on Video Productions. Mm. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. 
I'm Keith Powell, and going on right now is my Keith Says Yes Fest. I'm saying yes to lowering your payments, yes to your trade-in, regardless of condition, miles, even if you're still making payments. My Keith Says Yes credit approval process helps me say yes, you're approved. So if you want new Chevys, yes. New Fords, yes. Lifetime warranty, yes. Come see me, Keith Powell, at Yes Chevy and Hurricane, and Yes Ford in Huntington. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park. The Polar Bears continue to hold a 10-5 lead over the Buchanan Upshur Buccaneers on the mound for Buchanan. Wyatt Mason in relief for Drayden Rice. Coming up to the plate for the Polar Bears will be number three, a junior Cameron Peschel, who in this game has grounded out. He's had a single. He's had a double, stolen base, an RBI, and a run scored. So a lot of stats will go on the stat panel for the Polar Bears after this game. A lot of runs scored, a lot of hits, a lot of RBIs. They lead 10-5 trying to dig a bigger hole and bury the Buchanan Upshur Buccaneers. Earlier in this game, Buchanan held a 4-0 lead over the Polar Bears. It's been 10-1 Fairmont Senior since then. Start at the bottom of the fifth inning. Here is the pitch from Mason. Curves outside for ball one. Batter is Cam Peschel, who coming into this game, at an average of 333, four hits, six runs, and two RBIs. He's got three stolen bases. Pitch from Mason called ball two, and Mason can really move his pitch around. Here's the 2-0. That one caught Peschel. Tried to duck out of the way of it. Take a look real quick. Frame by frame, he ducks out of the way, and it caught him on the arm. I thought it got his face. It didn't. It caught him on the arm. And so, Polar Bears got a base runner. Cam Peschel, who already has a stolen base and a run scored in this game, brings up Sammy Vianney to the plate, who had a single in third inning. Here's the pitch from Mason. There goes Peschel again. The throw is over the head of Marple. And Peschel has his second stolen base of the game. And that was called strike one on Vianney. Count is 0-1 after Peschel's stolen base. One on and nobody out for the Polar Bears. Second baseman Garvin way over now. That one is grounded back and foul. Count is 0-2. Here's the pitch. steps out. Second baseman now is Tucker Burr. Instead of Ethan Garvin, he's come in and taken his spot in the lineup. So Burr is at second now for Buchanan, and he is close to that base, ready to pick off Cam Peschel. There's a little big gap between first and second, though. If Vianney can get it there. That one bounces, and Peschel takes off and walks to third base. Count is now one and two for Vianney, and Peschel gets to third. Did the same thing in the third inning. Here's the one, two. Grounded by Vianney. Over is Marple. The throw to Rice is in time, but an RBI for Vianney as Peschel comes in, and the Bears lead 11 to 5. Now batting, number two, Logan Logan Canfield up to bat now for the Polar Bears. 
That one curves in for strike one. Good pitch by Mason. Nobody on and one out. Polar Bears now lead by six. That one in the strike zone for strike two. After trailing four nothing in this game, the Polar Bears have outscored Buchanan eleven to one since then. They lead by six. Here's the 0-2 to Canfield. That one is swung and chopped to Mason. The throw to Rice in time for the second out of the inning. That'll bring up Brody Whitehair. Brody Whitehair has grounded out twice in this game. Both ground outs were in the third inning. And he had a single in the second. Two outs for the Polar Bears. Ten of the 11 runs scored in this game for Fairmont Senior has been on two outs. That one was in the dirt for ball one. That one is chopped foul by Whitehair. Count is one and one. Pitch from Mason. Curves not enough. And it's ball two. 2-1 two count now. Mason has thrown 42 pitches in this game. Came in relief for Drayden Rice. Goes back to the curveball and misses again. And the count is 3-1. and one. See, Mason's throwing back-to-back -back curveballs. Let's see if he goes to the same pitch on a 3-1. Goes to the fastball, and Whitehair swings and misses at that one. Makes the count full. Two outs, nobody on for the Polar Bears. Here's the payoff pitch from Mason. And that one called strike three, and Whitehair strikes out looking... Just the second strikeout of the day from either pitcher for Buchanan, and that ends the fifth inning. Top of the six coming up next when we return here on Video Productions. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier, and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that Golden Boot Pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Sandwiches. Better with Pepsi. Welcome back to Mary Lurette Park. Polar Bears lead 11-5 over Buchanan Upshur. As we head into the top of the sixth inning, due up for the Buccaneers will be Gage Parsons, Jaden Westfall, and Runyon. Look to see. Looks like they're going to have a pinch hitter. And it's going to be Jevin Westfall coming in. So Jevin Westfall coming in now for the Buccaneers. Start the sixth inning for Parsons. Now batting number two, Jevin Westfall. Here's the pitch from Jones down the middle for strike one. So the third of the Westfall brothers in the game now for Buchanan. Pitch from Jones. Misses outside for ball one. Uh -huh. 
Here's the 1-1. One, one. That one down low for ball two. Hayden Jones only 12 pitches in this game. This will be number 13, the 2-1. Swung and grounded. Very short. Jones, bare hand throw to straight is in time. Straight hangs on and makes the catch. Westfall ran into him and knocked the ball free, but counts as an out. Take a look at the replay. It was very, very slow hit. Jones turns around, bare hands it. Throw to Straight. You can see Blake Straight make the catch, and then Westfall runs into him right there, and that's when the ball came out. So it does count as an out, and there's one away, nobody on for Buchanan. That pitch was in the dirt to Jaden Westfall. And that one is grounded. Whitehair fields it. Throw to straight is in time for the out. Two away now. Back-to-back -back ground outs for Buchanan. Brings up Runyon to the plate. In this game, Runyon has flied out, reached on an error, and grounded out. Runyon. So Blake Runyon steps in. The pitch from Jones curves, and that one bounces behind Miller. Count is 0 and 1. The pitch from Jones grounded. Can Whitehair make the play again? He fields it. The throw to straight is over his head. It doesn't go out of the park. So Runyon will stay on first. But an error there, and it's the second time Runyon has reached. Now batting number seven, Mason. Brings up Mason now. He is now pitching in relief for Rice. Wyatt Mason, right-handed batter. Base runner is Blake Runyon. Pitch from Jones down the middle for strike one. Base runner on first. Two outs. Here's the 0-1. Fouled back into the press box by Mason. Here's the 0-2 from Jones. And this one's into right field. Peschel diving, and he hangs on for the catch. Cam Peschel lays out. Take a look at that replay. How about the effort from right fielder Cam Peschel? As you can see him dive, and he does hang on for the third out. of the inning. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning when we return here on Video Productions. Mm. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. I'm Keith Powell, and going on right now is my Keith Says Yes Fest. I'm saying yes to lowering your payments, yes to your trade-in, regardless of condition, miles, even if you're still making payments. My Keith Says Yes credit approval process helps me say yes, you're approved. So if you want new Chevys, yes. New Fords, yes. Lifetime warranty, yes. Come see me, Keith Powell at Yes Chevy and Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington. Welcome back to Mary Lou Ratton Park. The Polar Bears have a six run lead over the Buccaneers of Buchanan Upshur. Due up in this inning will be Hayden Jones, Blake Strait, and Matt Masters for the Polar Bears. Either be Masters or Miller. Masters batted last time. Now batting number 24, Jones. Starting the bottom of the sixth inning. 
And if the Polar Bears are able to put four runs on the board, which they have done in an inning twice now in this game, the game will be over at the end of this inning. But they've got to win by 10 or lead by 10. Pitch from Mason misses low for ball one. Polar Bears have done a lot of their damage with two outs. See what they can do. If they can get a base runner or two without an out. As that one is fouled back by Jones. Count is one and one. 47 pitches in this game for Mason. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Mason deals, and that is into center field by Jones and down for a base hit. Hayden Jones has a base hit, his first of the game. He walked in the third inning. We got a leadoff single, and that brings up Blake Strait, who struck out in the second, got a hit, and scored in the third and grounded out in the fourth. Nobody out. Base runner is Jones. He's been a real threat on base. Buchanan has worried about him as a base runner in this game. That one down the middle for strike one to straight. One on, nobody out. Four of the Polar Bears. Blake Strait is the batter. He stands in the 0-1, and this one is into right center field and down for his second base hit of the game. And two on and nobody out for the Polar Bears. Now batting number four, Ethan Miller. Back-to-back -back good hits for the Polar Bears, and Jones is on second. Straight on first, nobody out. Like I said, if the Polar Bears are leading by 10 runs at the end of this inning, this game will be over. They lead by six now. And with two on and nobody out and Ethan Miller up to bat, it's possible. Miller has been on base every time, but he hasn't been able to run on base. And here's a shot by Miller into left field. Back is Kiesling at the wall. And Kiesling makes the catch somehow. And Jones takes off. He tags up at second and gets to third. Ethan Miller almost had a home run there, but it was robbed by left fielder Luke Kiesling. Take a look. Wind has died down. It was windy earlier in this game. Kiesling is able to make the catch. He leaped right at the fence. One out, two base runners for the Polar Bears are Blake Strait and Hayden Jones on second and third. The pitch to Gorby inside for ball one. So it was windy at the start of this game, especially when Hours hit that home run. I think that would have been gone either way. Almost no wind now. Two on, one out. That one up high again for ball two to Gorby. And if Gorby's, if Gorby walks right here, we'll have the bases loaded for Dylan Hours, who already has a grand slam in this game. Here's the 2-0. That one is called strike one. One out. Two on, four of the Polar Bears. Here's the 2-1. This one is hit hard by Gorby. Back at the wall is Kiesling, and he catches it again. Jones tags up, takes off. He scores straight, slides safely into third, and into scores Hayden Jones. The Bears lead 12-5. Dylan Hours comes to the plate with only one on. Two outs now for the Polar Bears. Base runner on third is Blake Strait. Pitch from Mason. Swung and missed by Hours. 
Has a grand slam in the second inning, a double in the third, grounded out in the fourth. Count is 0-1, the pitch in the dirt. Count is 1-1, one one, four hours. Hayden Jones has scored his second run of the game. That is another run scored by the Polar Bears with two outs on the board. So the catch was made in left field by Kiesling, and then Jones tagged up and scored. So two and one count for hours. Here's the pitch from Mason. Swung and Hours pops it straight in the air. Marple underneath it at short makes the catch. And that'll end the sixth inning. Polar Bears have a seven-run lead over Buchanan and Upshur. And if, unless the Buccaneers pull a massive inning, could be over after the end of the top of the seventh. Watching live streaming coverage of Polar Bear Baseball here on Video Productions. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold and blue pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Sandwiches. Better with Pepsi. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park. Polar Bears lead 12-5. to five. As we head into the top of the seventh inning, due up for the Buccaneers will be Drayden Rice, Brody McDaniels, and Luke Kiesling. And unless Buchanan can score at least seven runs in this inning, this game will end without needing the bottom frame of the seventh inning. Hayden Jones has come in and pitched very, very well in relief for Logan Canfield. He's got 20 on the deck. That one up high for ball one. Batter is Drayden Rice. He started at pitcher earlier in this game for Buchanan. That one misses outside for ball two. Here is the 2-0. It's fouled back by Rice. Makes the count 2-1. and one. Pitch from Jones. That one misses up high, and it's a 3-0, 3-1 count for Rice, who has been on base every time he's been at the plate. The 3-1. And misses outside, and a walk for Rice. So he's had three singles in this game, and now a walk. Now batting number four, McDaniels. McDaniels comes to the plate for Buchanan, who has a single and walked twice. He's came around and scored once as well. That one was down the middle for strike one. Base runner is Drayden Rice for the Bucks with one on and nobody out. Jones tries to pick him off and Rice slides back safely. The 0 1. Swung and this one is into right center field. Peschel under it. Peschel makes the catch for the first out. And the Polar Bears are two outs away from improving to. Four and one on the season. Luke Kiesling comes to the plate now for Buchanan. 
Kiesling has struck out, grounded out, and walked in this game. Oh, this is not number four, Kiesling. This is number 44 for Buchanan, and it is Spratt at the plate for the Bucks. So Jackson Spratt steps up for Buchanan. One on and one out for the Buccaneers. They trail by seven in the top of the seventh inning. Jones delivers a swing and a miss by Spratt. Count is 0-1. Rice is the base runner at first, who has a pair of steals in this game. Try to pick him off there, and that was close. But he slides back on safely. Count is 0-1 for Jackson Spratt. Pitch from Jones inside, gets away, and Rice takes off, and he gets to second. Count is now one and one for Spratt, and Drayden Rice in scoring position for Buchanan, but they need seven runs to keep the game alive. One out, one on. Count is one and one. The 30th pitch of the game for Jones misses up high for ball two. That one down the middle for strike two. Count is two and two now to Jackson Spratt. Base runner on second is Rice. The 2-2. Two -two. Fouled back by Spratt. Approaching 8 o'clock here, which will make two hours and 30 minutes of game time in this game. First four innings took a while. Last couple have gone by pretty quickly. That one fouled back by Spratt again and the count remains two and two. It was the exact opposite against East Fairmont on Monday. First four innings flew by. The last three took a long time. To finish, one out here. Uh, swing and a miss and a strikeout if Miller makes the throw and he does. So Spratt strikes out. But Rice advances his base to third. And there's two away now for Buchanan. That'll bring up Tucker Burr to the plate for the Buccaneers down to their last out. With a runner on third and Drayden Rice trying to come around and score for the third time today. The pitch from Jones is grounded. This could do it. No, no one's there. Gorby gets there and there's a bounce pass to straight, not in time. And Buchanan does put a run on the board. That is Rice's third. And they have a base runner at first. Take a look at that play. Look for a second. It's like Gorby's not going to get there. He's not going to get there. He does get there. He throws it directly into the ground. That'll flip it to the top of the lineup for Buchanan. Landon Marple. That one's up high for ball one. Here's the 1-0. -oh. Popped up and foul by Marple. And the count is 1-1. One, one. one on, two outs. Score is 12-6. That one up high for ball two. Jones deals the 2-1. That one misses outside for ball three. So a 3-1 count now to Landon Marple. Bears are one out away from improving to 4-1. and one. They lead by six in the top of the seventh. That one is in the left field and foul down third baseline. Count is full.
Hayden Jones would like to end this game on this pitch. If he can strike out Marple. This will be pitch number 41 for Jones, and it is down the middle for strike three. And the game is over. The Polar Bears win. They advance to 4-1 and one on the season. And a back-and-forth game. And the Polar Bears hang on to win 12-6 after trailing in this game 4 nothing. We'll have post-game wrap-up, scoring recaps when we return here on Video Productions. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. I'm Keith Powell, and going on right now is my Keith Says Yes Fest. I'm saying yes to lowering your payments, yes to your trade-in, regardless of condition, miles, even if you're still making payments. My Keith Says Yes credit approval process helps me say yes, you're approved. So if you want new Chevys, yes. New Fords, yes. Lifetime warranty, yes. Come see me, Keith Powell, at Yes Chevy in Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park, where the Polar Bears have just improved a 4-1 and one on the season with a 12-6 win over AAA Buchanan Upshur. Go through the scoring recap in the first inning for the Buccaneers. It was Jaden Westfall with a solo shot to left field for a home run that put the Bucks up 1-0. And then in the second inning, Drayden Rice, Brody McDaniels, and Ethan Garvin all came around to score. That gave Buchanan a 4-0 lead. Then we go to the bottom of the second inning. The Polar Bears had two outs with the bases loaded and queue up Dylan Hours to the plate. A grand slam that tied it at four, and the momentum went out the door from there for Buchanan. They went downhill, but in the third inning, they were able to retake the lead when Drayden Rice came and scored, made it 5-4, and then the bottom of the third inning, Hayden Jones scored, Blake Strait scored, Cannon Dinger scored, Braden Gorby scored, Dylan Hours scored, Cam Peschel scored. Six runs in the bottom of the third inning made it 10-5 to five in favor of Fairmont Sr. The Bears would add two more runs. Cam Peschel and Hayden Jones each got their second run of the game, made it 12-5, to five. and then in the top of the seventh inning, Drayden Rice came around for the Bucks for his third run of the game, and that is how we got to the final score of this one. The Polar Bears win... 12 to 6. We'll take a look at the upcoming schedule for Fairmont Senior. They will play a doubleheader on Saturday at Weir High School. They play the Red Riders of Weir at 11 a.m. Following that will be a matchup with the Golden Bears of Oak Glen at 1 p.m. And then they are away again on Monday, April 1st at 5.30 at Preston. They're back here on Tuesday, April 2nd, but unfortunately that game will not be live streamed on here. That It will be a home game, but it won't be live streamed. Polar Bears back in action on April 3rd at Phillip Barber, and then we'll be back for the live stream on April 4th against the Bearcats of Grafton, as well as for next Saturday against Nicholas County at 11 a.m. So two live streams next week. The Lincoln game will not be live streamed and take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Buchanan Upshur Buccaneers. They lose 12 to 6 in this one to the Polar Bears. They aren't back in action until April 5th, which is next Friday against an out of state team Bourbon County at it says 8:30 a.m. Then they're at home against Philip Barber on Monday the 8th and at home against Bridgeport on Monday or Tuesday, April 9th. But until then, we'll be back next Thursday here 
on the Polar Bear Sports YouTube channel and video productions. Until then, have a good one. The news is good tonight from Mary Lou Retton Park. The Polar Bears of Fairmont Senior defeat the Buc Buccaneers of Buchanan Upshur 12-6 with a comeback. You're watching live streaming coverage of Polar Bear Baseball here on video.